Welcome to another episode of the Dad Speed Piracy Server, and it's time to start spying on our enemies and probing their defenses. We need to start gathering some of the more hard to find resources and try to do it in some sort of creative engineering way. And we need to get our base closed in and build a welder ship to help with that construction. All that and more is coming up right now. The rules of this piracy server are simple. It has both PvE and PvP. If you attack another player, there is a no excessive damage rule, which is a little subjective, but it evolves around the concept of piracy, where it's considered okay to attack and cause some damage if it's to acquire resources. The idea is to not just demolish someone's base or ship just for the purpose of destroying it. You do just what is needed for resource acquisition, and that's it. The other rule is that any base, either fixed or mobile, must have a beacon set to the maximum detection distance of 50,000 kilometers. Because of the vastness of space, it at least provides an opportunity for players to find each other. It still requires a bit of work, but with some diligence, it is at least possible. People have asked, what constitutes a base? And generally speaking, if you can refine ores or assemble components with it, it's a base. The survival kit being an exception because you can't make much with that. So far in this series, we've left the moon, searched the planet's surface, found a couple bases, found the skeletal structure of a player's future base that we promptly took over to use as a recharging post, disassembled a ship we found for some much needed metal grids, and drilled out the side of a mountain to start building our own base of operations. We need to get the base built and defended as soon as we can, so we can start our nefarious activities. And to do that, we need some cobalt for some more metal grids. We got enough metal grids off the small ship we ground down to get going, but we need more. Now, fortunately, while searching the planet for some civilian bases, we found some cobalt but it's very deep under the surface, which gave me an idea. I thought perhaps I could build a small drone with the new AI grid blocks to go to the cobalt location, drill some more, and ferry it back and forth to this new base while I continue to build it out. The concept I had is probably not entirely unique, but I thought I'd build it long and slender, like a pencil. If I kept it only three small blocks in diameter, the thing would be just skinny enough to slide down the hole behind the single drill. I also figured I could use the new capability to lock the drone's coordinates to a beacon and move the beacon around on a small mobile platform to just keep punching holes down to where the ore is. I nicknamed my mobile beacon the Scorpion. It kind of looks like that, doesn't it? The idea was good but my implementation was questionable. I tried a couple of different drilling approaches with this thing. First, I tried to fly the drone close to the surface, then turn off the upward thrusters, so it would use gravity to keep dropping down and drilling the hole. I figured with the rest of the flight block active, it would keep it straight up and down, with the alignment to gravity set to a very narrow 1%. But that didn't work. The drill drone tilted off to one side when it touched the ice and just didn't dig a nice straight hole like I wanted. I also tried setting a flight path that started at the surface and had a travel point set 70 meters below. This idea was that if I very slowly lowered the drone with all thrusters on and kept the bottom of the drill from hitting the ice, it would keep a nice vertical alignment and do what I wanted, but it didn't work either. The drone wouldn't fly down below the surface. I think it may have been because there is a minimal distance of zero you set in the flight block, and it's possible that the drone reached this zero point. And even though the flight path went below ground, it created some sort of incompatibility and just stopped the drone. I even tried a third alternative of cycling the upward thrusters off and back on just for a fraction of a second to gently nudge it down, 
but that also just wound up eventually tilting the drone. So for the moment, I've given up on the automated drone and just went ahead to get my Cobalt. Though I did use the drone, just not as I intended. I attached the drone to the bottom of my big miner, flew it over to the Cobalt deposit, and then after parking the miner on top of a temporary elevated structure, it was a simple matter of taking manual control of the drone to lower it down and keep it straight. This worked pretty well. And it was also easy because I had the reticle on my HUD to help me keep everything straight. The ore though was deep, 100 meters down. But using this mobile drilling drone was way easier than building a massive drilling rig. Plus the drone was reusable. I could take this thing anywhere. Next, I wanted to get a little better look at the civilian bases to see what I might be up against, particularly player Bormino. Now, Boromino is a regular on DadSpeed servers, so we've been bantering about having some PvP on Discord, so I'm looking forward to mixing it up a little. What it also looks like is that he's got a pretty big blue rover with about four top-mounted Gatlin guns. The whole thing looks like it's built large grid, so those four large grid guns will definitely put up a fight. There might be a couple others at the base, but there are some charging areas for ships and maybe some small rovers. There's also a little temporary structure somebody put up that actually might come in handy. And over at the main shield, we've got a pretty large grid ship under construction, also getting equipped with weapons, but there could definitely be some resources to acquire. I'm formulating a plan, but it's too early to talk about that on the video. I mean, my enemies are watching. With my initial spying mission complete, it was back to the base to work on some interior build out and fortifications. For this job, it was time for a welder ship, but nothing fancy. And truthfully, the first model just sank to the ground with the weight of the components, but a couple upgrades later, it was at least capable. It wasn't a great welder, and if I tipped it too far forwards or to the sides, it didn't have the engine power to stay aloft, but it was enough to get the job done with the floor and for my hangar door. Now for the hangar door, like the space station on my standalone playthrough, I wanted something a little cool in its motion. I played with a couple designs and I wanted to use rotors to rotate the door open and also lift the door to maximize the opening to get things in and out. I do love the mechanical part of building in Space Engineers, and I learned a couple things on this build as well. To be able to connect the rotors on one side of the door to the other, I had to use merge blocks to make the blocks coming off each rotor head joined as one grid. Here's where the rotors though again let me down a little. Rotors with their heads don't align evenly with the blocks around them. There is a rotor displacement setting which will raise and lower the head up and down on the rotor, but even with this displacement set all the way down, it still doesn't create even alignment with the other blocks. This extra height of the rotor with the heads caused a sideways stress on the pistons and kept them from moving. I cranked up the piston pushing force to maybe overcome that, but once it got into the red, I didn't want to force it and invoke the mighty clang, so time for another plan. Hangar Door 2.0 used my favorite block, the hinge. I had to rethink placement and construction a little, but fundamentally, it was the exact same envisioned mechanism. I also used the blast door block edges that provide a little collision forgiveness for the top and bottom so the edges would slide. For the sides, I used the blast door blocks that have the two sides slightly shaved down to give a tiny bit of movement space. The end result was a door that sat recessed even with the surrounding blocks, then rotated and lifted open with some simultaneous overlapping motion. I'm really, really pleased with this design and the graded windows give it a slightly more aggressive look, appropriate for a pirate base. 
Next is to add some proper defensive guns and get my defensive drone sorted out and working the way I need it to. I also have to move my refining and assembling into the base interior and make this mountain cave base more self-sustaining so I can focus on more of the offensive actions. But all that comes in the next episode. Like and subscribe if you want to see what happens, and I'll see you next time.